your girl Chaz. Welcome to another Chaz Chat video. Man, so I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I started to do this video I'm about droughts. The dictionary definition of drought is the prolonged absence of something specified, meaning something was supposed to happen and it didn't. Another definition of it is a prolonged period of abnormally low rainfall. In other words, a dry season. And I had this whole thing of what I was gonna say, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm in a dry season right now, even when it came to posting this video. I'm gonna share with y'all what gives me comfort. If you have ever been, or maybe you're in right now, a dry season, and you can relate to me, man, I hope that this video can give you some solace while you're in your drought. Grow that logo. So the story that I had prepared to tell you was the story about a man named Elijah. And Elijah was uh, basically like one of God's prophets, right? And there were some other people in the world who they were Baal's prophets. I don't know if they're Baal or Baal, but we're going to say Baal. I don't really know how to pronounce it. But anyways, there was another group of people who followed this other dude. And Elijah was like, nah, my God's a real God. And they were like, nah, my God's a real God. So they set up this thing where they let up these, built up these little things. They was like, hey, whoever answers, whoever's God answers by fire is the real God. And Baal ain't bringing no fire. So then, like, the whole time, Elijah was, like, teasing him, like, hey, maybe he's in the bathroom, maybe he's got earphones and he can't hear you, or, like, this is, like, stupid stuff. So then, he, like, drenches his little thing in, like, water and stuff, and then, like, calls on God, and God, like, soon, lights that thing up for him. So, Elijah's like, yo, all y'all false prophets about to die. So he goes straight Mortal Kombat and kills every false prophet. Prophet, everybody that worshiped Baal, pew, pew, everybody gonna die. Pew, pew, everybody gonna die. So he goes straight Mortal Kombat. Just Final round. Finish it. Like literally, this man does not stop until every single last one of them Peace is dead. Out. Now, one thing to note about Elijah, he was actually in a physical drought where there was no water for three and a half years. He was living in the wilderness because there were some people that wanted to kill him, so he was out there surviving. And I know there's some people out there that can relate to surviving to the point where you forget what it's even like to live anymore. You just survive. And so Elijah was in a place where he was surviving. Like there was literally like ravens dropping off his food in the morning, like the dirty little birds, because like literally God was providing for him even in that dry season. So then Elijah, after all that, he tells his people, he's like, hey, go get you something to eat, go get you something to drink, because there's the sound of heavy rain. God had promised him that there was about to be some rain. Basically, long story short, what happened is God put a drought on this land as a curse because the people were disobedient to God. Mind you, this is Old Testament, so we do not live in the covenant anymore where what we do determines how God treats us. That was back in that time period for those people. We don't we don't live under that. But in that time, that much was that was very much in effect. So God told him, hey, it's about to rain. That was the promise that he gave to Elijah. That's what all this is about. So Elijah says, go, it's about to be some heavy rain. That was kind of symbolic to me because oftentimes you'll probably hear me talk about how sound often precedes the manifestation of God. And like the sound of heavy rain was just symbolic to faith at that time because literally a lot of times you hear things that you can't yet see. So God might have promised you something, but you see the opposite of it and you have no idea how that's actually even going to happen in your life. And like dry spots don't have to be tragic. I wanted to say that because a lot of times people think of these tragedies we don't all have to go through that. Your dry spot could be look like a very good spot to other people. Other people could look at you and say you work a corporate job. You work in a bank. You make $26 an hour working in a nice, cool, air conditioning building. You got it, but your soul is dry. On the outside looking in, everybody thinks you're doing great, but you feel miserable. That can be a dry spot. That is a dry spot. But the great thing about storm is it reveals what you're made out of. So if you grew up in church, you know about the song, The Wise Man Built His House Upon a Rock. If you didn't grow up in church, you know about the three little pigs. Where the wolf goes around and says, I huff and I puff and I'll blow your house down. When the house was made out of straw and he blew, the house fell. When the house was made out of, I think, sand or whatever, and he blew, the house fell. But when the house was made out of brick, or in the, in the song in the Bible, or the, not the song, there's a children's church song. But in the story in the Bible, the house is made out of rock, so rock or brick. When it's made out of rock and a storm comes, the house cannot be shaken. Now I wanna make this very clear. Tragedy does not come from God. God will not put you in a miserable situation to teach you a lesson or to discipline you for being bad. We don't operate under that covenant. God is good because he's good. Not because you're good and he's not bad to you or mean to you because you're bad. And your bad is never good enough to outdo his grace. I know I say that a lot. I'm gonna keep saying it. But although he will not cause those situations to hurt you, he will allow certain situations to get your attention. A lot of times we give the devil way too much 
credit. We put ourselves in half the situations we find ourselves in. And then we'd be like, the devil busy today. Like, no he's not. You're actually doing all the heavy lifting for him. But God can use that bad situation to strengthen you or to build your faith or to reveal something to you. But back to Elijah. So, he hears a sound of heavy rain, and then he sends a servant up to the top of the mountain to say, Hey, God said it's about to rain, so I'm sending you up to the top of this mountain. Look, come back and let me know that you see that it's about to rain. And so the guy goes up the hill. He's probably like going up like this, like, cool, cool, cool. This guy, we talk about his God just let this whole temple on fire after he drenched it in water, and then it came on fire. It's about to be some rain. So he goes up there, and the servant is looking, and he don't see nothing. So, think about the story that I just told you. Elijah was going straight more to combat fra, 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 on all these people, killing people left and right, who said that his God was a liar. And now you gotta go back and tell, tell this man that just told you that God told him it was about to rain, that you don't see no rain. That couldn't have been an easy walk back. But so he gets down there and he says, Hey, E. Uh. How you doing? <laughs> There's nothing there. And Elijah says, go back. So he goes back. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess he didn't hear me. I don't know. He goes back and then he comes back and Elijah's probably like praying or something. He's like, There's nothing there, E. And Elijah's like, go back. All right. But now he's out of breath. Now he's out of breath because he's tired. Because the mountain. Elijah has this man do that seven times. Seven times. But the crazy thing about rain is they come from clouds. And the crazy thing about clouds is they don't just pop up. They come from invisible water droplets that are already in the air. And they start to kind of move around to form something in the air that we know is a cloud. So even though in your situation, you don't see the manifestation, that doesn't mean that God isn't moving things around for your benefit. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. Your sight is not a reflection of his promise but your faith should be. So finally, on the seventh time, the servant comes back down. He goes up there. Okay. Comes back down. He says, Ayo, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand beginning to form. And like, when I read that, I would think that he would have been like freaking out. Like, I thought he would have came back to Elijah like, hey, yo, E, like, you said it was about to be a cloud. Like, God said it was going to rain. You said it was going to be a cloud. At first, when I went up there, I didn't see nothing, but I came back and like, it's a cloud. Like, oh my God. But like, nah, he was just like, I mean, it's small, it's there. Barely. So it went from there's nothing to there's something. Barely, boy. But Elijah was geeked. Like this man was so hyped, he outran a horse. A horse, my dude. He heard a cloud, and dude, as the dude was talking, like, man, it ain't really nothing, but Elijah was like, yo! Like, what if we responded that way? Because I'm pretty sure after Elijah left, the guy was probably standing there like, my dude, he was, he was this small. But what if we praised him anyways? What if when we started, it looked insignificant, but we praised him anyways? What if when people looked at our starts, they said, yeah, it ain't much, but we praised him anyways? Because if God gave you a promise, He's already given you what you need to finish it. And even if it's small, small as a man's hand, that cloud should excite you because you already know the outcome. It doesn't matter what it looks like. What if we focused on the promise more than we focused on the problem? What if we didn't look at our circumstances because we didn't want what we see to distract what we believe? What if we kept our eyes on what God said versus what we see? That little cloud was never insignificant. It was literally always major. So don't let people try to tell you that your start is, is insignificant. The craziest part about this whole story isn't even that Elijah was excited about the cloud and he was ready to go and God said there was going to be a cloud and there was a cloud. That's, that was expected. That Honestly, that was very predictive. That wasn't really the excitement. I think the most plot twist of this story came later on in the, in the, in the chapter where Jezebel threatened to kill him. And if you don't stop all this extra stuff, hey, I will kill you. The thing is she couldn't kill him, though. She couldn't. Because if she could've, she would have. Just like, you know how like your mom be like, you get in trouble and you like walk past her like dodging and stuff, and she be like, if I was gonna hit you, I'd hit you already. Same thing. She couldn't lay a finger on Elijah. And she knew that. So she tried to scare him. 
and it worked. The crazy thing is, it has started raining. And after three and a half years of no water, having these dirty birds drop your food off, you somehow surviving in the wilderness. After having this thing where God lights this thing up on fire for you, all this faith that you had, the seven times, go back, go back, after all that, it's raining now, Elijah. Someone says one little thing to try to shake you up, and he ran and hid in a cave. Verse says Elijah was afraid. He ran. He let something scare him out of his promise. God is trying to pour his rain onto us, but we let so much distractions and noise and negativity stop us from receiving the rain. Elijah literally ran away. We do that sometimes. We run away from what God is trying to bless us with. We walk away from our assignment. Whether it was an actual death threat, negative people saying things, fear of failure or fear of success, or thinking that you're not qualified enough, what is it that's stopping you from receiving the promise that God put on your life? You were always equipped enough. You were equipped the moment he called you. There is a cloud. And even if it seems insignificant, praise him anyways. When it seems small, know that it's major. Don't let the manifestation be in your face and you let someone scare you out of your promise. If you got anything out of that, give me a thumbs up down below. Leave me a comment, kind of tell me what you're going through. As always, if you are not already subscribed, please do that. And we will see you next Sunday for another video. Thanks.